I ain't open it. We'll call to order the Finance Committee meeting for Thursday, February 12, 2009. Everyone would stand for the invocation and pledge. Dear Lord, we ask that you enrich us with your grace, further us with your heavenly blessing, defend us in adversity and keep us from evil, receive our prayers, and forgive us our offenses. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, roll call, Ms. Suzanne, everyone present, except for Councilman Bell and Councilman Thompson. Uh, public comment period, if you wish to speak, please come forward and fill out a comment card. You'll have three minutes. Lamar Dixon report. Good afternoon. Eddie's unavailable this afternoon. I'll be presenting the Lamar Dixon report for December. You should each have a copy in front of you. Page one is the changes in fund net assets. We have an operating loss of the last 42 months of 2.2 million. Page two, the financial statement highlights for the month. We took a loss of 83,000 with a budgeted loss of 18,000. A lot of that was due to Christmas parties that uh, didn't transpire. I blame that on the economy at this point. We also have one large um, family show that did not transpire. Um, our other operating income was up due to the RVs. Our indirect expenses were up due to a, uh, a uh, year-end uh, payroll accrual. Page four, the uh, year ending December 31st financial, we had a loss of 168,000. We budgeted a loss of 176, giving us a positive variance of $7,800 for the year end. Page five is a combined income statement. It basically recaps the first uh, four pages. It includes the parish expenses down at the bottom. As you can see, we came well under budget with all expenses. Page six is the balance sheet. It just states our uh, assets and liabilities. And page seven is the uh, aging of our accounts receivables. As you can see, the majority of that that's past due is due to Hurricane Gustav, which we are actively working on collecting that money. Are there any questions? So to clarify, for the year 2008, the loss was $168,336, is that right? That's true. Okay. And are you concerned about the accounts receivable um, over 90 days? Or any, any concern or any history there with not, not collecting those? Or No, we've just actively started pursuing that like you can see energy we've already collected i've got a contact with the uh, national guard they were very good about paying with katrina i don't foresee any problems with this and we're working with the oep to gather that okay uh, any further questions from the panel anyone yes councilman clue uh do we have an exit plan for the facility? Not at this point. I would love to get with uh, members, somebody, and work out an exit plan, but as it stands right now, the only thing I know is put the keys on the desk and turn out the lights. Well, Mr. Chair. Councilman Lambert. I think we need a little better exit plan than that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the equipment and uh, has all that have been accounted for? Or have we had a walkthrough with this, uh, Parish President? Yes, they they had, uh, the process of doing that. They have done that, in fact. And uh, I guess they've met with the foundation, and we're going to take care of everything that's uh, on the punch list and be ready by June 30th. Yeah. So I don't think we'll have any problems with that. And uh, I think you have a cost put together, a budget for that. If y'all put that together. Repairs? Yes. We're working on the repairs right now. Right. Uh, we're going to do a gate-to-gate a -gate assessment at the end of the LSU Ag Show because with everything going on there, there's just too much movement to really right. do an assessment. Okay. But we will be in a position to close everything out by June 30th and 
settle anything and fix anything right. that uh, we are responsible for. Yeah. yeah, we'll have a list. We'll have inventories, everything set before June 30th. Mr. President, I'd also like to, um, if it's okay with you, act as a, like a liaison um, from the Finance Committee and from the Council to, to make sure that we're uh, everyone's in the loop and we have everyone's aware of the exit plan and everything. That's fine. Okay. Uh, we, we've had a couple meetings, uh, and as it draws closer, we'll make sure that uh, you're invited to any of those meetings. Okay. That's Great. Any further questions? Okay. Thank you. Next up, we have our finance report section, um, the sales and use tax report for last month, Ms. Quinn LeBlanc. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, tonight, we would like to review the uh, year 2008 with uh, the uh, Finance Committee. And first, I will review our two largest sources of revenue, which is the sales and use tax, which generally represents at least 51% of our total revenues each year. And second, the ad valorem or property taxes, which represents about 18.5% of our total revenues. And followed by that, I'll in, uh, let Assistant Treasurer Amanda Barat will review how we anticipate ending the year 2008. And thereafter, I think the uh, <coughs> parish president would like to make a few comments. Um, as you will soon see, our sales and use taxes are still strong, but we do anticipate a reduction in the 2009 revenues as the economy in our area of the, of the uh, country increasingly reacts to the national recession. The last downturn in our economy happened in, started in 2002. It leveled off in 03 and 04 before it began to increase and has continued to increase through 2008. As per the front page in the Morning Advocate today, Ascension Parish is expected to double our uh, population from 2010 to 2020. That is a, a very aggressive uh, prediction, but we think that we can meet, meet the challenges that it will impose. Um, the, the report predicts that Ascension Parish will be a leader in the state in growth through that same time frame. And of course, as we experience this growth, as we all have experienced in the past, it, 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 it increases the demand for services. And of course, with this comes a, a cost factor applied to that. And so I think it's worthy of repeating the last sentence in our 2009 budget message and I'll just read it. The real challenge presented to parish government is that we make the critical decisions at the appropriate time, which will resu result in realized efficiency and in turn provide the highest level of services available to the citizens of Ascension Parish. So as we go forward, we will always keep that at the forefront of our thoughts and actions. So if you look at your first report, it's our regular sales and use tax report. And we have, of course, three sales taxes. East Ascension Drainage is the first district that collects a half cent sales tax. And the middle column across is our sales and use tax district number one, which is our one cent sales tax. It's the, it represents the only undedicated revenue in the parish. And then we have our sales and use tax district number two, which is a half cent sales tax in the rural areas, and that is a dedicated revenue. It's two thirds uh, dedicated to road construction and one third to fire protection services. So I'd like to bring your attention to the year to day columns. First under East Ascension Drainage, you follow that across in the middle. You can see that for the year 2007, East Ascension Drainage's half cent sales tax yield 9.5 million compared to 2008, 10.9 million. So a million three increase over 08, over 07, or almost 14% increase. Our 1% sales tax district in 07 yield 14.2% I mean million 4.2 million and in 08 it yield 16.2 million uh, an increase in 08 over 07 of about two million dollars or 14 and a third percent and then the last district our sales tax district number two a half cent sales tax year to date in 07 
we collected almost 6.8 million. In 08, we collected 7.8 million over 07, an increase of about a million dollars or almost 15% increase. What we think went on in 08 was uh, the audits for 08 over, over 07 were, were uh, much stronger. And then the hurricanes expenditures in 08 from hurricanes Gustav and Ike. And the, also there were larger returns in 08 over 07 in the petrochemical industry. So if you turn to the second chart, it's a bar chart. And we're taking our one cent sales tax and, and only and showing you these <coughs> figures. This is year to date, 07, year 07 versus year 08 comparison. The blue chart is 07 and the red chart is 08. And we're showing you different sectors. And at the bottom, you can see consumer retail uh, increased by 13.5%, motor vehicles decrease by almost 13%, and business to business uh, action uh, decreased almost 27, a little bit over 27.5%, 08 over 07. And the petrochemical industry and their suppliers increased about 33%. Eight over 07. And then the next one is the pie chart, and this is really just trying to give you a good picture. It's not scientific, but the sales tax authority is trying to show us where, what sector in our parish are we deriving our sales taxes. And if you can see the blue slice is consumer retail, that represents about 31% <coughs> of all the sales taxes, sales and use taxes collected in our sales tax district number one again, using that as an example. And the red slice is motor vehicles. They represent 11% of the collections in 2008. And business to business represented about 6%. And of course, the biggest slice of the pie is the petrochemical industry and their suppliers, which represented about 52% of all collections in our one cent sales tax in, in 2008. And then the last page is another bar chart, and this is a historical chart, and it shows you our three sales tax districts. And you can see what I alluded to earlier that after 2001, if you just take the middle chart, being we're using one cent sales tax, and you can see it decreased in 2002, decreased again in 2003, but leveled off through 2004 before it started increasing again through 2005 through 2008. And I have just two more charts to show you attached to that. There are two pie charts. Now these are different because they represent the total collections in the parish, all the local sales taxes and property taxes in the parish. For, for all the taxing districts in the parish. The first one is our sales tax. 2008, uh, the sales tax authority collected over $107 million in local sales taxes. And you can see all the various slices of the pie that represent the percent of collections of each, with the largest slice being the uh, school board and then going around to all the sales tax uh, districts. <coughs> And then attached to that is a comparison of the sales and use taxes collected parish-wide in 2007 versus 2008. And you can see there was a little over 94 million collected parish-wide. This is local only, not the 4% state sales tax. Uh, 94 million, a little over that, was collected in 2007. And in 2008, 107 million was collected for local sales taxes in the parish. And that represented about a 13.7% increase. And then the next pie chart is property taxes, our second largest. Now, this is for all the, the taxing districts in the parish that assess property taxes. In 2008, the assessor assessed and the sheriff collected and distributed to each of these sales uh, property taxing districts $83.3 million. And you can see the uh, starting with the, the biggest slice of the pie again is the school board and it goes all the way around to all the taxing districts and, and it also includes the three municipalities. So if you want to look at that real quick. And then the sheet attached to it compares the uh, ad valorem, which are property taxes, 2007 compared to 2008. And you can see that the sheriff collected 
13.4 million in 2007 compared to 15.2 million in 2008, and that was increase in property tax collections by about 13.4 percent. So, if there's any questions on any of the reports thus far, I'll be glad to Go ahead, I, I answer. Got a few comments. Um, last year, this was when I first saw the property tax chart when uh, the assessor came. It blew me away that the parish government's share of the, of the pie was 3%. Um, this year we're at 2%, so I guess the pie got bigger, but our slice got a little bit smaller huh? uh, at $2 million. Uh, the other thing was I didn't see um, in the – I know we're comparing year to year on the um, – the sales tax collections for the month of December compared to November. Since did did, it, did we actually did we go down? Did we did we go up? The month of the month of December compared to last the collections compared to no, last to last month to November. It no, they went up. They they did go yep. up. Okay, that's good. Oh. And also, I didn't. We would have normally tried to give this report in in January. Right. So we do have another report for the, uh, January's collections, and they're showing an increase of year to date, which is only one month, over 07 of East Ascension drainage, 10.6 increase, uh, the one cent, 22 percent increase, and sales tax district number two, 20, almost 23 and a half percent. Comparing 2008 to 2007, as far as with the, the sectors um, that we're pulling from for the sales tax, obviously the concern, business to business, down 27.6 percent, motor vehicle down 12.9 percent. Um, you know, obviously directly related to the recession and everything. But my my question was, since you were here um, during the last downturn uh, in 2001, 2002, 2003, I mean, did, were these numbers do you, were they comparable then, um, as far as that that dramatic of a, of a decrease? Uh, yes, I think they do parallel. I think that you're seeing in business to business, that's business that sell like in uh, lumber companies that sell to contractors and mm -hmm. that's a, that, that sector right there. We pulled out the businesses that mainly sell to the petrochemical industry. So these are these uh, valve companies and things like that. Uh, so that is the first thing that we've seen that hit the recession was the, the uh, residential permits that have decreased dramatically okay. in our parish. I mean, it, good news is we finished the year up. Um, well, that's certainly a little alarm bells for me. Uh, Councilman Todd Lambert. Yeah, I might want to address this to Mr. LeBaron Bourgeois if I could. Permit-wise, compared to this year, now from a year ago, where are we at? As far as new home permits, that might be a big factor on this mm -hmm. negative. Yeah. The permits, how many new permits from now, from a year ago, as far as issued out at the 2007, we had 858, and as of last year, we had 530. So About 300 and something less. Yeah, it was like a 30 percent drop from drop. last year between 2007-2008. Right. But January was 45 for last year. For this past January, last month was 43. So it's, so it's hanging in. Hanging in about a balance of 40 to 45 a month. New Good. residential. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Further questions? President Marnes? Well, if you look at this, it. it, it looks good looks bad in certain areas good in other areas uh, need to take into account that there were several uh, major audits in the petrochemical industry and that gave a spike in that area uh, if you look at the sales of car sales that's gone down a lot of the industry in this area uh, makes products that actually go into building cars and other type things so again I I will say that I'm happy that the sales tax went up. Another, I, I, we we haven't gained anything by this going up because we have debt service now that's kicked in. Uh, basically, eight hundred thousand dollars with the jail, and on the drainage side, about four point three million dollars a year. So we, even though and thank God it went up rather than down, but. 
we haven't gained any momentum here as far as actually putting money back into road projects and, and, and other projects. So again, it's a, it's a good picture uh, and hopefully it continues. Uh, but again, I don't want to get a, a false sense of security here. Uh, I don't think you should. Uh, again, uh, we haven't actually gained as much, again, as far as for putting money into projects. So uh, that, that's all I have to say, uh, like I said. But I hope it continues along that trend. Uh, I fear it won't, but uh, uh, I'm going to be cautiously optimistic. <laughs> Councilman Schechner. Uh, thank you. Uh, I just think it's, it's worth mentioning again as you look at things that I know it was a big uh, year with uh, people's property taxes going up, uh, myself included. Uh, uh, it did make a lot of people happy. Um, but that on operations of the parish government, we are at 2% of what the parish takes in. And, and so we just want to emphasize to people that this is not a a tax and spend council that we've uh, as a whole held down property taxes uh, a good bit uh, and and kept things at at that rate and uh, but at some point in time uh, at the two million dollars a year on property taxes with an increase in tremendous amount of people and increase in services that people are going to look at at some point in time, we're going to have to find some kind of way to provide those services, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll use uh, uh, whatever funds we need to have wisely and put them in the right place, and hopefully we can get plans going out to do that. But uh, uh, and I just want to let everybody know that parish government is at 2% of the property taxes that's raised in this parish. So. Also, I saw an interesting uh, study the Tax Foundation did. Um, they assessed every county uh, and as a percentage uh, of the property tax. Believe it or not, Ascension Parish is the second lowest county in the nation as far as property tax as a percentage of medium ho of average uh, home value, which kind of blew me away. St. John the Baptist was actually the lowest county in the country. Um, so anyway, but, like, I completely agree, $2 million. Um, Two percent of the pies. Not, we're not going to be able to get the services done that we need done in this parish, especially with the estimates of growing um, by tw in 20 years, um, doubling to 196,000, as the uh, study said this morning in the paper. So, Councilman Valentine. Thank you, Chairman. I, I think uh, the parish president speaking wise. Um, we should be very cautious, and I know that uh, he and uh, Mr. Grant are, are, are looking at keeping the cost down as far as parish, and I appreciate Mr. Shakes not bringing that out because we are uh, trying to uh, run a lean organization. And, and we shouldn't expect as councilmen that, you know, we're going to be able to accomplish everything. Um, because we do need to be cautious. Uh, I know several people up here uh, de either deal with uh, industry or in industry. I know Mr. Kluwai does. And um, it hasn't really uh, hit our tax rolls, but industry is really in a bad situation right now. And uh, uh, the, these uh, in industry uh, around us uh, produces a lot of the raw materials that go into uh, housing, automobiles, paints, and, and what have you. And uh, sooner or later, uh, you know, uh, it's going to catch up. So uh, they're doing a lot of adjusting, and I, and I hope that our administration does the adjusting also. And I know he's wise in doing that by mentioning what he did tonight, and I uh, appreciate that. So that uh, we just kind of got to watch the, watch the money. Amanda, were you going to finish up? Yeah. Um, you have the... Um 2008 unaudited preliminary financial report um, in front of you. This report you have in front of you is our 2008 unaudited preliminary financial report. At this time it does not include all of our hurricane expenses and revenue reimbursements from FEMA and there are a few more receivables and payables that we need to add as well as retainage on our construction projects. Um, just going through it, our overall revenues are at 95 percent. 
All revenues <laughs> of the parish are at the anticipated level for the fourth quarter of 2008. I have highlighted the general fund revenues that show 64% and that's mostly due to the FEMA um, revenue not finalized yet. Fire district number two is at 82% and that one is low due to a um, grant revenue that has not come in at this time. Lighting district, no, I'm sorry, Lamar Dixon there at 75% and that's due to a grant that was budgeted in case we um, exercised the option to purchase it and it was in the budget. So that's why it's throwing that figure off. Um, HUD Section 8 program, that one is at 190% and that is due to a disaster housing assistance program that came down through FEMA that um, we didn't know about it at the time the budget was being adopted, so it's not included in the budget, but we did receive the revenue from, from the uh, federal government. Tourist um, Commission is at 116, and that's due to the increase in their hotel motel taxes. Um, so that supplemental environmental project fund is only at 14% and that was interest that was budgeted but it's it didn't come in as budgeted due to the fact that we're closing that fund out. So um, it doesn't have any cash remaining in it so the interest is low. The Homeland Security grant, that is a reimbursable grant and we're still waiting on the grant revenues to come in for the expenditures that were um, paid out in 2008. So we have, we would probably book a receivable on the books for that. <coughs> Jail construction fund is over the budget by 275 percent um, and that is due to um, the allocation of the 2008 interest was higher than anticipated. The LCDPG Hillary Ville is at 69 percent and water wastewater is at 86 percent and both of those are due to grants that we have not we have not received any money on at this time. On your ex the expense side, exp overall expenditures are at 76 percent. Um, this is mostly due to all the departments operating within or below their adopted budget. Expenses, um, also expenses due to the hurricane are still not finalized and on the books at this time. Um, we have some questions for FEMA that we're waiting for them to answer before we actually finalize those expenditures. The two funds that are highlighted um, are HUD and that, again those expenses are contributed to the disaster housing program that um, came down after we had adopted the budget and the Tourist Commission, theirs is over because we are contracted to process their payroll and telephone expenses and then all the rest of the money goes to them. So um, they're, they over due to their hotel motel taxes increase. Um, that's it for the preliminary 2008 financials. The next page is the charts. Um, that compare the budget with the, ex the ex expenditures. And then the, the next page is a um, comparison report and charts that compare 2007 to 2008. <coughs> and the major differences in the revenues are due to East Ascension drainage bond issue and the portion of um, FEMA reimbursement that has not been booked at this time. And the major differences on your expenditure side are due to the defeasance of the East Ascension drainage bonds and then it increase in construction projects. Um, and then the, the last page just gives you a chart that shows the difference between the two um, years. Amanda, on the 76%, I, I know you said there's a lot still outstanding from Gustav. Um, what percentage do you think that'll end up being? Well, the percentage that we're going to book, it's going to be booked with the same amount of revenue for it. So it's going to increase the percentages, but it's not going to put it over the budget. The budget is there, and it's budgeted for it. It's just not booked yet. Right. I just, it looks like you, I mean, 
it looks like you guys are running extremely lean. Uh, and this second, uh, what Councilman Valentine was, was was stating earlier, I mean, that's to only be at 76 percent. I mean, if there is some outstanding, that's that's outstanding. So, anybody got any further questions? <coughs> Thank you. Next up, we have a funding funding request section. First are contracts, item 8A, river pair security systems for IS and GIS monitoring. Mr. Grant. You and Council goes it. Items A and B. The first is to approve a contract with the security service for the lease of equipment to, for the IES GIS department. And it's just paying some, some bills from November to, to December, and basically it's about $900. But we need to get your approval. So, okay. Mr. Chairman, second. Motion by Councilman Dempson Lambert, second by Councilman Shakespeare. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. The second is to approve. Uh, an agreement for the same, a similar thing, lease of equipment on the Bayou Plantation Annex, and it's kind of the same thing basically between October of 08 and December of 08. Uh, going forward, we will re-procure these services and bring you new contracts, but just trying to settle up our business, and this is about $120. Motion by Councilman Todd Lambert, second by Councilman Shakespeare. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. Okay. The third one is a contract between Ascension Parish and LSU. If you recall, to run our GIS department, we, uh, we had gotten some support of, of students and professor. And about mid-year last year, we cut the students and kept the professor for about uh, once a week. So that, that reduced that contract by about, about $30,000. So now the new contract going forward is going to be in the amount of $16,540. Motion. Motion by Councilman Kluat, second by Councilman Shakespeare. Any further discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. All right, item nine. Nine A, change order number one for Joe Severio Road Project in the amount of negative forty thousand five hundred and seventy nine dollars and sixty two cents. I make that motion, Mr. Chairman. It's a no. negative. Motion by Councilman Todd Lambert. No, second. second. Second by Councilman Kent Shakespeare. Any discussion? Any objection? One, one discussion. Councilman Dempsey Lambert. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We had this last night on our transportation agenda. Uh, I would look forward to next our next regular meeting that uh, we have this uh, reduction of a forty thousand to be in the road construction fund for Joseph Ario. So discussion. Now. Make this, Mr. Chairman. Councilman Todd Lambert. Yeah, uh, at the transportation committee meeting. Uh, this was uh, not the recommendation coming from administration. Basically, uh, the recommendation was there are no engineering reasons to install. Basically, what he's wanting to do with these $40,000 is to put cupboards in a frontage of a residence. And I got about six reasons why we, we shouldn't do that. <laughs> And one of them is there are no engineering reasons to install the drainage structures. Second one, the pipes would serve only aesthetic purposes. There's no drainage problems. There's no safety issues. Uh, four additional landowners along Joseph Area Road have requested coverts also. So this would be setting a precedent. So if we put them for one, what about the other four that's want, want to, theirs installed? Installation of the coverts uh, would uh, be inconsistent with the front yard pipe rules that have been applied to other neighborhoods along Joey Severio. Now this is all coming from administration. Uh, even the project engineer, Mr. Glenn Shine, was asked if he could provide an engineering basis for installing the pipe system and he could not find an engineering reason for doing so. Said it was not warranted. And uh, DPW would like to combine this saving with other project savings to create a crack seal program intended to extend the pavement life of many roads as possible. So it's coming from administration that they're not in agreement with uh, putting, this, putting these coverts down. It's not a drainage issue. It's not a safety issue. You know, this is part of the widening money. Uh, Cannon Road was one of the roads that was supposed to be widened. 
We ran out of money on it. Well, uh, talking to uh, Mr. Ronnie Fairchild, DPW director, there's about $80,000 we could put some covered where so definitely a safety issue right next to the canal, which most of y'all know about. Uh, this would be half the money for that project. There again, the widening project money was in one pot. We come up with a negative. It don't have to stay on that particular road. Joy Severio Road Fund was $4.3 million to build. Now, it's a negative $40,000. $40, it's not a safety issue. I think it needs to go where there's a safety problem. If we do anything with it, I would recommend that we put, that'd be the half the down payment on putting in coverage on Cannon Road, which is on the widening project. And like I say, this is coming from administration. They're in opposition of it. The engineer that did the project says it's not warranted, it's not an issue, and it's just more or less for aesthetics, and I'm totally against uh, putting it on the Joy Severio project. Mr. Chairman. Councilman Dempsey Lambert. I appreciate all your homework on this, Mr. Lambert, but uh, it's not much I'm, homework. I'm look, we hey, I have the floor right now. Ago. This is a common sense and a safety issue, is what I'm looking at. After every road project, there has been some different things that have come up on these on these projects. The first thing was a a benchmark was off. They have rerouted water on this project. I'm looking at it from a safety issue and a common sense issue. You can look up whatever numbers and facts and figures. I've dealt with two administrations on this. The previous chief administrator, the, the uh, last engineer we had here, they were all in agreement with, with this change. Now, uh, I'm not going to go any further with this, but this is a, definitely a safety issue and a common sense, and that's what I'm looking for. Mr. Chairman? Councilman Lambert. Again, I, I spoke with engineering that was that we have on staff right now, and they're telling us that there's no drainage problem and there's no safety issue. And even the previous engineer that we had on board stated the same thing. He's not lo no longer with us. So this is not coming from me. Guys, this is coming out of our transportation committee meeting that we had two days ago. I didn't do much homework because we went over it two days ago, Mr. Lambert. It's right there in our package. <clears throat> it's not much. You know, administration is saying that it's no drainage problem and it's no safety issue. So why are we going to put a negative? We already spent $4.3 million on this project. Let's go to where it really, we really have some safety issues, not a, a static you know, purpose here. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I stand with my, uh, my original. Well, the motion on the floor is for the change, the negative change order, is it, and that is to put that yeah. um, back into the general fund. Yeah, the road construction. The road construction yeah. fund. I, okay. Question: uh, Is it the road construction fund, or is it the Joey Severio construction fund? I think we need to clear that up. I, the motion on the floor was, as the change order is written, I believe it goes to. Road the road construction fund. That's how the, it came out of transportation. Right. It didn't go to Joey Severio. It came out to the road construction fund. That's what. That's, that's what how the said. ordinance was read. That's what it said. Well, I'll, I'll make a substitute motion that we go and put it into a road construction fund for Joe Severio. As the additional funds come in next year, we're going to do this project. I have a substitute motion on the floor by Councilman Dempsey Lambert. I need a second. Second. Second by Councilman Joseph. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Objection. Uh, objection. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have a roll call on the substitute motion. Councilman <coughs> Fulight. Ma'am? Okay, yeah. I was reading. On the substitute motion? Yeah. I agree. Councilman Cullen? Yes. Councilman Johnson? Yes. Councilman Joseph? Yes. Councilman Dipsy Lambert? Yes. Councilman Todd Lambert? No. Uh, Councilman Shake Snyder? On the information I've received tonight, I'd have to uh, say no on this. I'd like to see it back in there. Councilman Valentine? No. 
Okay. Got five yeas and three nays. Substitute motion passes. Questions, Jack? We and again, and again, guys, we're we have a, a staff of expertise on board, and we're not going to follow their recommendation. We, we we don't need them if we're not going to. You know, they're telling us this is not warranted. This is a, a it's, open. it's bad. It's opening a precedent for a really a bad situation. And uh, y'all playing politics? Cause I can see how it's going across question. the table. So, um, yeah, look, it, it's bad. It's a bad thing. So, Councilman Clark. Yes, is it? Uh, we haven't heard from the DPW folks. <laughs> well, Miss Jackson. Yeah. So this, this is it. Right this is over. Okay. It's over. <laughs> this is it. Next, we will move on to item 9B, <laughs> supplemental agreement number one with GSA for completion <laughs> of LA44 sidewalks transportation enhancement project in the amount of thirty thousand five hundred ninety-one dollars. Miss Bowman. DPW recommends approval of this agreement. Just so I can give you a little bit of history. We were awarded $263,158 for a transportation enhancement project. GSA has already um, finished up to 95% plans on this. In order to get us through construction, inspection, operational evaluation, the environmental clearance, and the final design, we need to move forward with this to finish the project. The total we will spend on the project to complete it with what we've spent already would be 48750 just so you have that, the information of what we spent so far. But we recommend moving forward with this. Question, Mr. Chairman? Councilman Lambert. Yeah, Ms. Jack, I think at the last meeting, we, uh, at the transportation meeting or whatever, we talked about uh, this is an old project and why are we having some new engineering fees come up, pop up on us? Yeah, I was supposed to do some background on that. And then Ms. Liz sent it out, but I apologize for not getting another copy tonight. What, to give you an idea of the $30,000, $5,927 of that is the design completion. The rest is activities that are going to take place throughout construction. These enhancement projects require a lot of paperwork and documentation to get reimbursed. Okay. And most of the, the rest of the $30,000 is to get through that paperwork. Okay. Appreciate that. So moved. Motion by Councilman Shakespeare. Second. second by Councilman Johnson. Any further discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. Item 9C, change order number one in the amount of eleven thousand three hundred and ninety-six dollars and ten cents for the two thousand eight pavement markings contract. DPW is asking for this change order. This was to add striping to Roddy Road at the request. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Motion by Councilman Lambert. Second. Second by Councilman Cluot. Any discussion? <laughs> Any objection? Motion passes. Item 9D, Highway 73 turn lane contract with RCS Construction Company in the amount of $76,370. DPW would like approval on this contract to give you an idea what this is for. Previous administrations agreed to install a turn lane on 73 at Seabro Road in conjunction with a signal installation. We were unaware of that and we're trying to get that in. in place and built through the contractor who's already on the job. It, from my perspective and what we pay for a turn lane, if we would have done it on our own, we would not have gotten it for $76,000. We would have paid much more. So we are very pleased with this price and we recommend so approval moved. of it. Motion by Councilman Sheck Snyder, second by Councilman Valentine. Any further discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. Item 9E, change order number two for Dutchtown Library. Okay, we have uh, change order number two for the Dutchtown Library. Uh, the first item that we have is, is required by uh, Energy, and they want, a, they want the contractor to put a pull box on the property which is actually a junction box. So moved. Second. Motion by Councilman Shakespeare. Second by Councilman Dempsey-Lambert. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. The second one we have is uh, when we initially submitted the plan, they approved the sprinkler system, but the fire marshal has a requirement that you have to get the licensed subcontractor to submit 
sprinkler design. And when he submitted it, they wanted to upgrade it uh, in the library to have an increased flow of water. And uh, so he made the requirement that we have to up the size of the piping. And that's what uh, Exhibit B is. So moved. So Motion by Councilman Shecksnyder, second by Councilman Johnson. Any discussion? Any objection? Okay, so yes, sir. And, and the last item we have is um, is the rain days. Um, the contract that turns in is rain days, like before the 12th of every month. And we've been sending them into Miss Angel Del Hotel, and uh, we have them addressed at this meeting. Uh, for November, we recommended granting them five for December 10th and for January 1. So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion by Councilman Todd Lambert and second by Councilman Kluot. Any discussion? Any objection? Motion passes. Right, thank, thank you, sir. You, sir. Item number 10, request for additional annual appropriations in the amount of $10,000 from Capital Area Legal Services. I guess so once I got the letter, uh, this is Mr. Wayne, James Wayne, who provides that service in Ascension Parish. Uh, he's making a one-time additional request of $10,000. He had originally wanted $20,000. Uh, his budget got cut on the federal level uh, substantially, and uh, he's trying to get some money reinstated. Uh, He's not here tonight. I don't know if he's talked to any of you about this subject, but uh, basically what he's asking for now is a $10,000, uh, I guess, going up $10,000 from the budget. Mr. Mr. President, what exactly does uh, the scope of his services that he provides for us? Well, he, he provides, uh, I guess, legal services to those who can't afford it uh, in the parish. and. Been around for quite a number of years. Uh, I know he was here when I was here before, so he's still here. So <laughs> evidently he's providing uh, legal service on both sides of the river in Ascension Parish. I think uh, he has uh, an office here at uh, on, in Francois Plaza. Councilman Joseph, you had a comment? Yeah, I did get the letter, and I did speak to Mr. Um, Wayne. Mr. Wayne. Mr. Wayne. And... Uh, and you asked one of some of the services is most of the time uh, his service is uh, family multi children have to do paperwork for kids, uh, document take paperwork for schools, and also legal aid for parents that uh, kids get in trouble, stuff like that. There, any medical bills, they do a lot of legal assistance for uh, for family like that. I know in Donaldsonville they do approximately about they see about in in a year time between five to uh, eight hundred. Uh, you know, customers there for legal services. Well, if we were going to do this, we don't have the the budget impact analysis form attached. To what fund would we pull from, and is it budgeted? And we currently have a contract with uh, Capital Area Legal Services for about seventeen thousand a year, and that's paid out of the general fund. So, if not, I would make a motion that we approve it as a one time. With this. Excuse me. Councilman Shakespeare. This is uh, originally, w w what is it normally? They, they get 17000 a year normally, and he wants an extra ten. Is what? Okay. I, and, and he was very plain to me with a one-time request also because of the budget cuts that he received right. from the state I, and, and the federal and government. I, I know Mr. Wayne, he does a good job, and he's been doing it forever. <coughs> I absolutely have no problem, you know, with, with him doing it. But, I mean, it is... Almost a uh, hundred. Well, it's uh, probably a sixty percent increase in his budget. I, I I would just like to hear from him. That's all. Uh, I, I would like to see us table it where he could come in and and, and speak and and let everybody know. Uh, he does a good job at what he's doing. Uh, but I mean, it's just hitting us from there. If, if you want to move it forward, and then he can come to the council meeting. I, th I, uh, that would be fine. If he so that, up, well then or you postpone it to the next. You pass on it. What's What's the pleasure of the committee? I agree with Councilman Jackson. I, I mean, I'd like to either table it or um, just I would, pass I'd on. I'd like it. to entertain a motion uh, for the, for the floor to entertain a motion from me that we uh, postpone this till the next 
finance meeting, maybe we have Mr. James come. <coughs> I mean, Mr. Wayne, come here. I second in that discussion. Council, uh, motion by Councilman Clua to um, table this to the and have him come to the next uh, council uh, finance committee meeting, and uh, second by Councilman Todd Lambert discussion. Also, when he comes, when, when Mr. Wayne comes, I'd like to know what other parishes are putting in income into this. Uh, Fund so we can see, you know, if it's, are we the only one doing a one-time contribution to it? You know, that's something we need to know. That maybe when Mr. Wayne comes, maybe if he can have some of that information for us, or send it to us prior to the meeting would be good. I asked him that question. Uh, his biggest contributor, of course, is East Baton Rouge Parish, but I think uh, something St. James, all the surrounding parishes do. Yeah, uh, and they all coming up with a one-time. Uh, that's. Yeah, I mean, he said he was he was asking them all. Now I I'm, I can't answer that okay. question honestly, but uh, okay. He did say I think Baton Rouge was approving. Good, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, yes. The next the motion was for the next motion finance. Was to, motion was to table it until the next finance meeting and yes. have uh, administration contact Mr. Wayne and have him come. Possibly with some type of backup to explain what we got. Any further discussion before we move on? Okay. Uh, item 11, discussion of revenue estimation. Mr. Grant. Council members, this discussion is an outgrowth of an audit finding that we've had for a couple of years, which is that um, the auditors have suggested that we move to multi year budget. That, that we at least forecast some years out what it is that where we would be, what is our financial picture and where we would be. This is not uncommon in government that you would do that. Uh, we've kind of, we do a 12 month in a close out and, and, and move into the next year. And quite honestly, we've, as, as you heard earlier tonight, we do a pretty good job of hitting the mark on what, what it is that we estimate, but we really don't project it out. Um, the, the, the best practice standard for this is about a five year forecast. And it, what basically is involved in this is, is, is you, you involve the tax recipient bodies, uh, all those that receive taxes, as you saw in that pie chart tonight, and we try and engage an economist in doing some work for us to, to try and figure out where we, are, where we are and where we're going to be based on our previous trends and the most likely trends. And the kinds of data that they use is basically the, the, the thing that you got today in the, the population projections. They use the, the, the President's Council of Economic Advisors projections. GAO. There's a number of data points that they begin to use to, to try and give us some, some assistance on that. Uh, in its most sophisticated example, the state of Louisiana, which does a revenue estimating conference by law, they have to set revenues twice a year. Um, they, they do uh, July and the December formal estimate, at which time that number is set as the number you, you, you begin to work from. Uh, in my experience at the City of New Orleans, we did the same thing. Uh, we had a revenue estimating conference that met once a quarter and produced an economic forecast uh, that we, we basically could benchmark uh, where well, our uh, numbers were and where they were going, and basically that forecast would take us out the next four or five years. Um, I think it's, it has a lot of value here for, for where we're going, and, and particularly in growth. Uh, you, you really need to begin to get some, some, some sense of w if we had to provide 20% more services five years from now because we know population's coming, is the revenue going to be there? Uh, and it's a, this is not an exact science. It's an economist, I mean, and they're, they're almost worse than engineers to deal with in relation to, to being imprecise. But, but at the same time, it's the best possible analysis we could have. So what we're suggesting here today is that we begin that process, basically with the Sales and Use Tax Authority and the assessor and, and others that have a stake in this game. I've had some conversations with Sheriff Wiley about it. He's very interested because you know he says I only collect them, but I'd like to know what I'm collecting. And, and, and like to get some sense of it, and you know, we all tax recipient bodies at the end of the day. So what, I, what I'm suggesting to you is, is that we begin to engage the tax recipient bodies in a discussion about the potential of doing a, a revenue. If we may not formalize it as it is in, in some charters as a revenue estimating conference, but we may want to at least have the benefit of some type of revenue estimation process that helps us to, to, to understand where we are, possibly mid-year, prior to budget and quite honestly, to project where we're going to be three to five years from now. 
Mr. Gray, I want to thank you. I know we've had a lot of discussion about this, and I mean, like you said, we, we've had a lot of discussion over the last year about how we could uh, develop a financial master plan and how we can determine our strategy for providing all the services that our citizens are asking of us. And we can't do that unless we have some kind of roadmap. And this this professional revenue estimation. Um, just like the state does, like you said, is, is one of the best ways that we can do that. So I want to thank you for uh, for pursuing this. Uh, any further discussion? Great. Thank you. Next, um, property and casualty insurance renewal. Mr. Robert. Thank you, John. I had to kind of laugh a little while earlier when they asked to turn our uh, cell phones off. Because on the route here, when I was here, I got two calls from some of the brokers we're dealing with wanting to change their proposals <laughs> to the better. Okay. So I guess what I'm going to show you tonight is worst case scenario. And I'm going to ask you all probably to let us use the next couple of weeks that we have between now and renew date, you know, March 1st. And then at that time, just go ahead and, and, and renew with, with one of the companies that gives us the best thing. In front of you, you see a graph. <clears throat> that depicts the uh, the coverage and the premiums just for the last, you know, seven, eight years. Uh, over those years, I've had two major brokers that were uh, fighting to get our business. One of them is Brown and Brown, and the other one is Arthur Gallup. This year, up until, I guess, probably 45 minutes ago, it looked like probably the Ace Insurance Company with Brown and Brown had the better program, you know. Now I'm not too sure. But anyway, you see that overall, the package plan that they present, which is the automobile, the general liability, the professional liability, and things of that nature, has actually decreased from last year. Uh, even though the automobile's uh, count has gone up a little bit, you know, the, uh, and also workman's compensation, you know, because of the payroll escalating a little bit, you know, that premium has gone up minuscule. The largest increase has been because of the property insurance. We have had some uh, property values increase and some added property to the to the overall plan, but uh, you know the, the increase in property values, you know, is, is a lot more than the increase that we've experienced in the casualty portion of it. As you can see, you know, the automobile uh, property um, automobile coverage premium went up a little bit. The general liability went down. Uh, public officials' liability uh, went up just a little bit. The employee benefits are the same. Employee-related practices went up a little. Uh, the crime is about the same. Boiler machinery coverage went up a little. And the property is what really accounted for the, uh, for the largest increase in the existing proposal. The workman's compensation is about the same, even though we considered a, uh, a a pretty sizable increase in the payroll. And then you see that the total insurance premiums compared to last year with the increase in automobiles, the increase in the payroll, is roughly about an 8% increase with this worst case scenario. Okay? Uh, everything else is, is the same. You know, my fee is the same. The TPA, which is the uh, third party administrator, his fee is all the same. So I guess probably I would just like to have the opportunity to entertain a better proposal if one comes out. And from the indications that I received here and on route here, you know, it seems like probably we might be able to end up with a little bit less than an 8% increase for next year's coverages. So that's my request. Just okay. So do you want to just table this till next and you know, come back to us? Well, you need a motion for us to well, what, would, what do you I need? Would, you see, it renews March 1st. Okay. I would just like to probably have permission to read, renew this or better than this, you know, by next, by March 1st, because you know, I won't have time to meet with y'all right. before that day. I'll get with Mr. Grant and, and Tom and we'll review the proposals and then just go ahead and renew what we have to do. President Martinez? One thing with this, we, we probably won't meet before this. And I'm going to have to sign this to make sure that we have insurance. So uh, I, I just want to make sure that you understand that. Uh, so I, I'd like to also in that motion give me the authority to yeah. sign that insurance policy without anybody having any, you know. I'd like to put that in the form of a motion. I'd like to uh, give, the, give Mr. Robert as our representative uh, the ability to negotiate 
this insurance contract at this cost or less and to give the uh, parish president the authority to sign it. Second. Motion on the floor second. by Councilman Kuat, <coughs> second by Councilman Valentine. Any discussion? Yeah, Any objection? You, so moved. Thank you. Uh, item 13, ordinance to amend the building department's fee schedule. Laverne, is this you or Ricky? When I started back in April, one of the first folders that got put on my desk was the listing of our building department fees and permit fees and inspection fees. And uh, the question was, is it time to raise them? And we did an analysis uh, that you heard some of uh, earlier tonight is from 2006 to 2007, we saw a 25 to 30 percent reduction in permit fees. From 2007 to 2008, we saw another 25 to 30 percent reduction in fees collected. And so what we did is we looked at, um, I believe, four to five of the surrounding parishes, uh, analyzed the fees that they were collecting, and adjusted our fee schedule to make it in line with what they're currently collecting. Ricky, does this, this is just what the fees are. I mean, and I mean, it doesn't show if they went up or down or I mean, I, compared I'm to what? Pretty sure I they all went up. Did they all go up or what? I have a red line copy that we'll put up here on the screen um, that thankfully Laverne put together for me. Um, the, the first three uh, stayed the same. Uh, the next one was, uh, I, I believe we were talking about changing that one to be consistent. The, the minimum permit fee for commercial twenty dollars. Correct. This minimum any time a fee would be uh, calculated and it wasn't a minimum fee, say if they came in and bought an electrical permit that was only a six or seven dollar permit, the minimum would be twenty bucks. Now presently we would up that to twenty five dollars. Uh, on page two uh, residential construction, the $75 per square foot, that used to be $45. Um, the $12 per square foot, that stayed the same. On item one, uh, we changed it from $1.50 to $3. For item two, we changed it from $1 to $2 per thousand. For item three, that stayed exactly the same. And the minimum permit fee, we think that needs to be $25, so we get it in line with commercial and residential. So they're both $25 for minimums. Um, the demolition permit was 50, now it's 60. Uh, cul culvert for commercial uh, was zero, now it's 50. Uh, house moving permit was 50, now it's 100. Uh, and no change for the second load. After hours inspection was 100, now it's 150. Was 100, now it's 200. Was 200, now it's 250. Let me explain that a little bit. On the, we offer that to our uh, citizens and contractors alone. Sometimes we have inclement weather coming. They just haven't got there. Uh, foundation prepared or possibly uh, framework done so they can put insulation in. And oftentimes they actually have to our inspection. The problem what we, we are seeing is the fact that we don't have enough monies involved in the permit, meaning the collection fee to pay for the cost of the inspector going out to do the job. So this is basically getting it back in line so we have a neutral uh, cost associated with the, the job services being done but the, the money we're not losing any on the uh, payout to our inspectors. Uh, the reinspection fee was 20 and now it's 50. Uh, and then the second, third, and fourth was 20 and now that's 25. Occupancy permit residential was 20 and now it's 25. Commercial was 20 and now it's 45. Uh, the contractor's license, there's no change on building, electrician, plumber, mechanical, no change on residential and farmers. Um, and we were discussing putting a house moving contractor's license in there for $100 uh, and then renewal fees in there. The next page, plan review. Uh, we previously had no fees for plan review uh, and now it's $60 for residential. If I may, look, this is <coughs> probably the biggest impact on any of it. We've been doing since 94, no cost for plan reviewing. The state of Louisiana has it uh, now created the Uniform Construction Code, which we are probably being watched closer that we've got to comply with state. We're doing a, a much better uh, plan review and more critical uh, code compliances than we used to. We're scanning the plans. We're doing these kind of things. We add, added one person to do scanning. 
so we're at the, at the fact that they call other agencies and building departments and our, our sister parishes are collecting uh, renewal fees. $60 for residential dwelling and the commercial would be one half of the building permit but a minimum of 70 bucks for commercial. That is, gentlemen, the biggest impact of the whole fee structure. Uh, trailer parks, annual permits, was 100 for up to 11, now it's 200, and was 100 for 12 and more, and now it's 400. Uh, inspections, there were none, there were no fees before. Now for the third trip and thereafter, it's $50. If so they uh, need three inspections, they're gonna start paying. This is on an annual inspection we do each year. Uh, electrical permits, temporary meter, there's no change. Service entrance charge, there's no change. Change out was 20 and now it's 25. Circuit charge uh, was three and now it's four. Uh, on the 120 volt and 240 volt was six and now it's seven. The motor installation charge, the only change is on item six. It was 15 and now it's 16. Uh, temporary cut in, there's no change. Rebuild, no change. Upgrading the service and relocating the service, no change. Uh, and then a minimum permit, that's where the $25, we're just redundant there. Uh, pl plumbing fees, they all went up a dollar on the fixtures. Receptors went from seven to six. Swimming pool went from 38 to 42. Sewer tie-in went from six to seven. Uh, Ascension Parish owned sewer stayed the same. Uh, fire protection and standpipes are the same. Heating units went from six to seven and the minimum permit again for redundancy. Uh, mechanical permits uh, went from 40 to 45, from 59 to 65, from seven to eight dollars per ton. Refrigeration went from 40 to 45. Uh, five to nine horsepower went from 52 to 60. Uh, 10 horsepower and over went from $6 to $7 per horsepower and coolers and freezers went from 40 to 45. Chillers cooling went from 12 to 14. Hoods went from 40 to 45. Commercial went from 28 to 31 on the clothes dryers. Incinerators went from 40 to 45. Boilers from 59 to 65. Heater units from 24 to 31. Duct heaters from 24 to 27. Heater duct 25, greater than 25 tons is seven to eight. Duct alterations went from 24 to 27. Cooling towers from 75 to 85. Uh, mobile home went from 20 to 22. And then single family mobile homes stayed the same. Fire extinguishing system went from 40 to 45. And then change outs uh, from 40 to 45, 59 to 65, uh, $2 per ton to $8. Is that right? I guess that was $2 and it went to $8. Heater only went from 20 to 31. Condenser only went from 20 to 31. Coil stayed the same, and the minimum permit went to 25. President Martinez. You all figured out uh, on a, say, a 1,600 square foot house, uh, what would be the, the increase to build that house? Basically, the. Uh, I mean, I don't want. You don't have to give me an exact figure, but. Presently, we, a house is cost anywhere from around 1,600 square foot living. That's basically what we base out at $45. So now we we'll go to $65. So if you were paying $450, you could be, be added another 10 to 15 percent. I ain't got the math in my head right here, but that's basically what it would amount to. Like $45. On that side. I think Ricky gave a budget. I mean, analysis to. Uh, to the administration where over the period of years we summed up in the, in the last two years the permit cost and, and the, the drop that we would actually increase about 15 to 12 percent in that range of recouping fees to uh, help, help balance out the operation of the building department. And Laverne, how did that compare to the city of Dallas and the surrounding parishes? Or is that we in the middle of the road pack, or we're the up right. end of the we pack, did. or we're the low end of the pack? We, <laughs> if you go to Baton Rouge right now, they got a building structure fee that uh, that building permit structure fee that went actually doubled in the past couple of years. Livingston went up with theirs. The city of Gonzales is just about in in the same line with us. So. We can't. We stay in the middle of the road. We don't want to hurt our citizens to the effect, but the the we, you know, just like anything, we haven't had an increase in permit fees since 1994. Hmm. I got a quick question, Councilman Blewett. <clears throat> Laverne, yes. with this uh, with this increase in uh, in costs, is it able for you to give better service? Well, <clears throat> yes. <laughs> the certification of our inspectors is required by the state. Uh, I don't think the service would be a, right. an increase. That's 
in service is other than uh, it would be at the wishes for a after our inspection that may may or may not be taken as many that's what I'm talking places about now as was before the ability to man up and, and have good inspectors and, and do your job good. actually that's what we I'll go with this thank you sir mr. chairman councilman labor might be a question for mr. Rick uh, our board of contractors well, who was all involved with this do was it just your planning or was who was all involved with setting these up actually mr. Henry Chauvin who just left uh, is a, a member of the board of contractors Dipsy Pendarvis um, Shucks. Yes, t a Mr. couple Koki of them. Was, I know I, they were attending these. Yeah. Or? Well, what they did, I presented this to them in a in a meeting that we have to hold four times a year, and they have a copy of this structure. Okay. <laughs> and well, they were everyone was comfortable with this, or they didn't have any comments. I gave it to them. I didn't receive any comments back. Okay, any further discussion? Right. Councilman Johnson? Uh, I think we need to clarify this a little bit more because there's some, some changes from what we have in front of us for what you presented with the minimum fees of 25 or a couple of them. I think there was another one in here that, that I, I may have missed to make sure if we approve this that we get the changes that you have in your document there, that that's exactly what we're approving here. We can have them. Uh, send in your packet to the regular meeting so you'll have them before the meeting to look at uh, next time if that's okay Mr. Dunn. Yeah. We we could also put in the difference from now in what we recommended. Uh, Mr. Uh, Johnson for your benefit the biggest change was the minimum fee somewhere 20 where you heard Mr. Compton speak many times that in to get it in comparison to the rest of the minimum fees so we don't have to adjust every time we got a minimum fee which was 20 as is now all of it would be 25 for minimum fees when someone come get the permit all right do we have a motion to pass this to council to be introduced i'll make that motion Count motion by councilman johnson second by councilman cullen any further discussion any objection Motion passed. Thanks, Jim. Motion adjourned. Motion adjourned. Motion adjourned by Councilman Johnson, second by Councilman Lambert. Meeting is adjourned.